So they finally made one. What the heck happened to my voice just then? Hello my baby! Hello my honey! Hello my rag my gal! Sunday you kissed my wife! Baby my heart's on fire! War for Cybertron Siege has brought back a number of Generation 1 classic figures and characters with fresh new gimmicks to open the wallets of the gullible. <laughs> yes, and no character perhaps is as curious as Refractor. In Generation 1 he was called Reflector, but presumably for dumb legal reasons Hasbro no longer is capable of using that name. So they have rechristened him Refractor, hoping nobody would notice or nitpick too much. They should have known better. In the show, Reflector was a trio of similar looking robots that combined to turn into a camera. Why they needed a camera is anybody's guess, but then again, why would they need a tape player? He appeared only a few times in season one, and by season two he had been quietly dropped. This may have been because Reflector never had a figure that was mass released to the public. The Generation 1 figure boxes had a kind of mail-in thing where you could send away proof of purchase clippings and money and they would mail you a Reflector figure. And it seemed very few people took the time, or effort, or expense to obtain the toy. And now, only 35 years later, they finally realized how dumb that idea was and made a version available in stores. The box is the typical deluxe business, with the figure and accessories visible inside. Character art is on the side panels, on the back is a look at the figure in both modes and how they interact with the Battle Masters, and a peek at the secret third mode of the camera. Douse the side of the box with black light and it reveals the hidden Cybertronian message, which in this case spells out Reflector. Now that we've had our little laugh, let us open up Refractor and review him properly. <laughs> Out of box Siege Refractor comes with his instruction booklet. This spiral knob thingy, a gun accessory, and a shield accessory. The HPR Telefocal Shield boasts 10 muscles, 20 targeting scopes, and 15 shield. The spiral button thingy is apparently called the Bioscale Compression Rotor, which has no stats at all. The EMM Distortion Blaster boasts 10 muscles, 14 targeting scopes, and 16 mouse pointers. And this is Siege Deluxe Refractor in his alt mode. Ugh. It's supposed to be a ship of some kind, though it has no wings or thrusters or anything even remotely shippy. He looks quite boxy and decidedly non-vehicular. In fact, you can tell that it's just a robot with only token parts of him folded up to look boxier and more ship-like. You can see his legs here, you can see his arms here if you turn him over, and you can tell that this part is his chest. It's just... The goofiest ship in the cosmos. At least until you plug in the gun and shield accessories as prescribed by the directions. To finish parts forming the alt mode for Refractor, see this hole at the back? Take the spiral dial thingy and plug it in. Take the shield accessory, you will see this peg at the bottom. Plug it into this hole at the back of the ship. Make sure that this ridge which pokes down has enough clearance to go into the back. The small tabs at the side of the shield should plug into the slots. Take these forky bits at the front of the ship and spread them apart. Take the gun accessory with this blocky part jutting upwards. You will see these holes on the inside. Just sort of ease the gun accessory until the holes and the pegs line up. Then squeeze and clamp until the gun holds in place. And this is Refractor's alt mode, finished with his accessories accessorized. He doesn't really look all that much better, except that the accessory parts cover up some of the more robot -y bits in a slightly less grotesque manner than before. He does have landing gear below, so he will stay level if you put him down on the ground. 
And the robot arms serve as kind of landing skids. There isn't really much more to say about the vehicle mode. It works for what it is. The way they used the accessories to mask the robot parts was clever, but they pretty much had to. This figure is a triple changer, essentially, and you can tell that the vehicle mode was an afterthought to the robot and camera modes. Fortunately, the Siege line has the Battlemaster port gimmick going for it, and Refractor's alt mode has a mess of open pegs and ports into which you can plug Battlemasters, Titan Masters, Prime Masters, Fire Blast accessories, or any weapon accessory that will fit into a standard 5mm peg. Which means if you have any spare Battlemasters lying around, by all means, use them to pad out your refractor so he won't look so barren. Though I find he looks much more like a ship with shockwaves or six guns wing-a-dings plugged into the sides. Refractor's transformation to robot is fairly simple. First, pop off the accessories. All of them. Getting the gun out can be a bit tricky because it pegs in very securely. The top of the ship pops loose. When transforming to ship mode, you'll see these two tabs on the inside which peg into these little grooves. Be sure to angle it properly so that they peg in securely. But when transforming to robot mode, pop them loose. Take this part and fold it inwards. And then fold the assembly backwards until it covers up and becomes the chest. You already know where the robot arms are, so just fold them outwards. Fold out the robot fists from the forearms, and rotate the arms so that the elbow bends forward. As you may have deduced, the robot head flips up from the back, then rotate the head so that it is facing forward. Split the legs apart, rotate so that the thigh is pointing forward, and flip up the feet. The ship's landing gear folds inward to kind of cover up these ugly gaps, give the robot a 180 degree twist at the waist, and rotate the legs so that the shins are facing forwards. And this is refractor in robot mode. This mode is functional and stable if not entirely remarkable. He's a simple biped with basic robot structure, but he does bear good resemblance to the Generation 1 animation model. Both with his form and colors, the head has that sort of curved crest on top with the robot face and lips. There is no light piping, but he does have plenty of sculpted detailing to round him off, and the paint applications are neat and clean. He doesn't seem to have any of the grunge paint splattering that has been so prominent with other figures in the Siege line. Maybe they thought it would spoil the camera mode. He's a bit smaller than your average deluxe, meaning that you're getting a bit less for your money in terms of mass and heft. There are hollow parts in the forearms and the backs of the legs, also on the back where the head flips inwards. But he still feels pretty solid and doesn't flop around, and all of his joints are nice and tight. He retains the Battlemaster port gimmicks, so you can plug the robot mode full of Battlemasters, Prime Masters, Titan Masters, and Fire Blast accessories. There's a lot of open ports, so you can swap things out to taste. You can also move the iris accessory to the back if you want to mark one refractor as the center of the three, or have all three as the center. Deluxe refractor comes with all the normal articulation that you would expect from the Siege line Deluxe. The head will rotate 360 degrees, the shoulders will rotate 360 degrees, and also have this internal hinge which will allow the arms to splay up. There is an upper bicep swivel and a double jointed elbow so that the arm will fold very well. The wrists will fold up and down as part of the transformation. There is 360 degree waist rotation. The hips will allow the legs to kick forwards and backwards almost 180 degrees. The secondary hinge on the inside will allow the legs to splay outwards. An upper thigh swivel is included, and the knee joint will bend backwards 90 degrees. You can fold the toes forwards as part of the transformation, but again the feet will not tilt forwards and backwards, but they will fold in and out with this secondary ankle hinge. Your deluxe refractor can be put into all kinds of nifty poses, and his large feet will help him to maintain a decent balance. You can deck out refractor pretty good with the Battlemasters, but he is also a triple changer. To transform refractor to his camera mode, take the head and rotate it backwards again, 
as if transforming to a robot. Do the same with the arms, but after rotating them backwards, twist the elbow rotation so that the arm folds backwards like this. Don't rotate up the other half of the double joint, just the lower half, so that they are kind of stacked diagonally down thusly. Rotate the waist 180 degrees, rotate the thighs 180 degrees, flip out the landing gear so that it juts out sideways, then rotate the legs and fill this empty cavity with the forearm. It's a bit tricky to get it in place, but with practice, you can get it done fairly quickly. Do this with both legs. You will see these tabs, push them together, and lock the legs in place. Then take the ship landing gear and fold it inwards to kind of cover up these gaps on the side. And this is the camera mode, a sort of folded up block. You're probably looking at this and thinking there's not much to it, and you're completely right. By itself, one refractor in camera mode is dull and boring. But if you're fortunate enough to have three refractor figures, like I do, you can work some magic. What? Transform all three as you did the first one. In order to fit them together, turn these side ones around. You will see this peg here and this peg hole here. Also, these two protrusions on either side are meant to interlock. Fit and push them together until they lock into place. They should hold firmly. And then you have three blocks stuck together. What's that you say? Still doesn't look like a camera. Take one of the three dial accessories that you will have. Plug it into this hole on the top to be the focus knob. Each refractor comes with a shield accessory. And each shield accessory tabs together with these tabs and grooves. Tab all three together and you have the camera lens. It will only peg into the front of the camera. Line up two of the smaller holes at the top of the camera lens with these holes on the front of the chest. There will also be a tab and groove combo here at the base. You can also stick one of the dials onto the front of the camera as well so that it stores and holds in place too. Take the third dial accessory and jam it into the hole at the base of the center of the camera. Each refractor figure comes with the three gun accessories. Each one interlocks and pegs together to form the camera tripod. There are these three slots on the top that look like a whirlwind, which correspond to these slots at the base of the dial. Line them up, push them into place, and your camera has a functioning tripod as well. And this is Refractor in his camera mode, which is probably the mode that everyone will use him for primarily. Certainly there's no compelling reason to have three of his vehicle modes on the shelf, unless you have a lot of extra battle masters that you want to store into their open ports. The camera mode feels very solid, and of course the detailing is good. The plastic lens is a nice touch, and it's good that the guns turn into a tripod that will hold him up securely. As a camera, he doesn't really do anything besides looking cool, but the same can be said for almost any Transformer alt mode. Collectors are scrambling to find three of what would otherwise be an average figure. A cunning and shrewd use of completionist marketing. Well played, Hasbro. And of course, even in camera mode, you can still use the open Battlemaster ports to plug in all kinds of guns. Battle Masters, Prime Masters, Titan Masters, Fire Blasts, and anything else that you think you need to make your camera look flashier. Here is War for Cybertron Siege Deluxe Refractors. Next to Siege Deluxe Flywheels at Skydread. Here is Deluxe Siege Refractor next to Combiner Wars Defensor. And here is Deluxe Siege Refractors next to Funko Pop's Weird Al. <laughs> Refractor is an interesting addition to the Siege line. Fans of the Transformers franchise from its beginnings will be eager to get a hold of not one, not two, but three of these figures so they can get that camera mode they haven't been able to buy since the 80s. And in that aspect, Reflector delivers the goods. Positives are detailed sculpting, good colors and paint, a good robot mode with strong articulation, and a solid combiner camera mode which we've all been wanting for decades. Negatives are that the individual figures are small, kind of hovering between Legend and Deluxe, 
Some may find the transformation simplistic, some may sneer at the camera mode as a legacy technology, and I really want them to find a way to include a forward-backward foot tilt as well as from side to side. There is some hollowness in robot mode, and the vehicle mode is a parts-formed boxy mass of poorly hidden robot kibble, which relies on the addition of numerous separately sold accessories to make it look any good. If this weren't part of the Siege line, which was specifically made to provide more accessories, I would say the vehicle mode wasn't really worth it. Most collectors won't bother with the vehicle modes and will keep the refractors either as robots or the combined camera. Is it worth the expense to get all three? If you are a Transformers collector, there is no doubt of it. But people who are ambivalent, or casual collectors, will probably only want to buy one, and thus may well choose to pass on these entirely, since they would only get any real mileage out of the robot mode. The negatives in that case pull down his overall score. As a single Transformer, he gets 6 out of 10 deaths. But if you get all three, I say that he earns 8 out of 10 deaths. Oh, hold on, simply let me adjust the... Focus. <laughs> oh, uh, if you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, old baby. Tell the boy and tell me I'm your own. 